Hello, my name's Paul and today I'm showing you how to build a gaming PC. Uh, if you want to follow along with me, I'll put links in the description for all the same parts that I'm using, but if you don't have exactly the same parts, don't worry, you'll still be able to follow along and build your PC. Some of the things you'll need, a screwdriver, a large flat surface to work on, and a USB flash drive with at least eight gigabytes of space to install Windows. Take out of the motherboard box one SATA cable for each storage device you are connecting and carefully take the motherboard out of the box and the anti-static bag, holding it by the sides and being careful not to touch the circuits on the bottom. Place the motherboard on the motherboard box. If you have an M.2 drive like me, then now is the best time to install it. This is the M.2 slot on your motherboard. First, remove the heatsink by unscrewing and sliding it out. To install your SSD, you might have to screw in an extra standoff into your motherboard. Your SSD will only install one way with the notch lining up with the gap on the card. Slide it in, hold it down carefully and fix it in place with the screw. Now, remove the plastic from the sticker on the inside of the heatsink and replace the heatsink on top of the SSD sticker side down and screw it into place. Uh, next, we're going to install the CPU. Take it out of the box, carefully making sure you hold it on the sides. Don't touch the bottom side with the pins or the top as you might damage it. Locate the tiny triangle on the corner. This is used to match on the position of the motherboard there is another tiny triangle on the CPU socket. Lift up the lever and very gently place the CPU in place, applying no pressure. It should fall in place very easily. After the CPU is in place, bring the lever down and lock it in place. Uh, now you'll need to install a cooler for your CPU. Uh, different coolers are installed in different ways, so please refer to the instruction manual for your particular cooler. Uh, some already have thermal paste pre-applied but some aftermarket coolers come with a tube of thermal paste as opposed to pre-applied thermal pads. When you are applying thermal paste, make sure you apply no more than a small pea-sized blob to the center of the CPU. Tighten screws in a crisscross pattern, don't over tighten. Uh, take the cable from the cooler and plug it into the fan header on the motherboard, which should be located near the top. Now we need to install the RAM. Uh, if you're installing two sticks, then you need to install them in the correct slots. Most motherboards will have a diagram to tell you which slots to install into. Uh, most motherboards will ask you to use the A2 and B2 to make use of dual channel. Once you've identified the slots, click back the tabs, align the gap in the RAM stick with the notch in the RAM slot. Don't worry, they can only go in one way. Push down the RAM stick evenly so that both tabs click into place and lock. Do this again with your second stick, making sure the tabs lock into place. Uh, now we want to put the motherboard into the case. Uh, remove both side panels from the case. There's usually a box or bag of screws in it. Take this out as we'll need this for the rest of the build. If your motherboard has a separate IO shield, install it now in this gap at the back. The case I'm using already has standoffs installed. However, if you need to install standoffs, you can screw them in aligned with the holes in your motherboard. Sometimes they need six, sometimes they need nine. With the motherboard I'm using, I need nine. Gently lower the motherboard into the case and make sure the holes are perfectly aligned with the standoffs. Use the small motherboard screws to hold the motherboard in place. You'll need one for each standoff. Tighten the screws, but make sure you don't over tighten as this can put stress on your motherboard. Now to install the power supply unit or PSU. Locate where the PSU will sit in the case, usually in a rectangular cutout at the bottom, but some cases put it at the top. As you slide it in, you'll need to make sure the fan of the power supply is facing toward the ventilation. So it usually goes in upside down to the ventilation on the bottom of the case. Align the PSU with the holes and use the power supply screws to hold it in place. Now to plug the cables into the motherboard. We'll start with the 24 pin cable. You'll want to put it in the hole towards the middle of the case and push it into the 24 pin socket in the motherboard. It should just push in and click. The next cable is the eight pin power to the CPU and plugs into the eight pin socket at the top of the motherboard. So feed it through the top of the case and it should click into place easily. 
If your case has a USB 3.0 connector, you'll have a cable that looks like this. It connects to the USB 3 header at the bottom edge of the motherboard, but sometimes can be found on the right edge. Push it into place, being careful not to bend any of the pins. The next cable we'll install is the USB cable that looks like this, so we can power the other USB ports. This will plug into any of the headers labeled F underscore USB in your motherboard. You can usually find them at the bottom. Next is the HD audio cable, and we'll power the audio connections in the front of your case. This plugs into the F audio header, which is usually on the left side of the motherboard. To power the RGB lighting at the front of the case, take the male SATA cable and connect it to the female SATA cable from the power supply. There are four front panel cables that need to be plugged in, power LED plus, power LED minus, power switch and reset switch. Some cases have more, please follow your instruction manual and connect whatever you have for your case. These cables connect to the power header on your motherboard which is usually at the bottom near the USB headers. The power cables go in at the top, the power LED plus goes in the first pin and the minus goes in the second one. The power SW cable or power switch cable goes next to those and the reset switch goes below that. Next we'll plug in the fans. The fan headers have four pins and look like the four pin CPU header that we plugged in earlier. These are labeled CHA fan, OPT fan and SYS fan. Now you'll need to route the cables so they are well managed and look clean. You can use cable ties or Velcro strips, which some cases have pre-installed. Uh, good cable management makes it easier to fit the side panel back onto the case and easier to replace any cables in the future. Now we need to install the graphics cards. Some motherboards have more than one PCIe slot to fit a GPU. The one at the top is usually labeled X16. This is the one we'll fit the graphics card into to make sure we're getting the most performance out of your GPU. I usually lay my PC on its side to make the process easier. Uh, remove the two PCI brackets at the back of the case by unscrewing the thumb screws. Uh, push down the tab on the PCI slot and then gently push the GPU into the slot until you hear it snap into place and use the thumb screws to hold the GPU in place. You're going to power the GPU with the power cables labeled PCIe these have a block of six and a block of two pins that can be held together to make a block of eight. Different GPUs need different PCIe cables and sometimes need more than one cable. Count the number of pin sockets on your GPU and match them with the PCIe cables. Now all you need to do is put the side panel back on the case and you're finished building your PC and now you just need to install Windows. So on a different computer, plug in a USB flash drive with eight gigabytes of space, go to the Microsoft website and navigate to the download Windows 10 page. I'll put a link in the description below. Click on the download tool now for the Windows Media Creation tool. And when it's finished, downloading, launch the program and accept the license. On the next page, select the option to create installation media and click next. Make sure language, edition and architecture are correct and click next again. Uh, just on that, you should always install 64-bit windows for compatibility with current and later hardware and software alike. And since you probably have more than four gigabytes of RAM, you definitely don't want 32-bit windows as it can only utilize 3.2 gigabytes as standard. Uh, interesting fact for comparison, Windows 64-bit support up to two terabytes. So next, select USB flash drive and hit next. Then select the flash drive that you plugged in and hit next again. Once the files are downloaded to your USB drive, click finish and remove it from your PC. Now take the power cable that came with your power supply and plug it into the back of your PC and turn the switch to the on position. Plug your keyboard, mouse and USB sockets into the back of the PC and plug your monitor into your graphics card using a HDMI cable. You can switch this out for a DisplayPort cable later after you've downloaded the graphics card drivers. Use the USB flash drive that you just downloaded Windows to and plug it into your computer and then turn your PC on. Your PC should recognize your USB drive and take you to the Windows installation screen. 
accept the terms and then enter your CD key. There's a link to a CD key supplier in the description. If you don't have a CD key, you can click on the don't have CD key option at the bottom and you can activate Windows later. On the next page, select the version of Windows that matches your CD key or the version you're going to buy. Next, we're going to accept the license terms and select a drive to install Windows to. Select the custom option and then select the storage device from the list where you want Windows to install. Always remember to install Windows to the fastest drive. After Windows has installed, it's going to reboot a few times. Make sure you follow the on-screen instructions until you get to the desktop screen. Now you need to download your drivers, starting with the motherboard driver, uh, search for your motherboard on the internet, click on the manufacturer website and click on support. Go to the drivers and select the operating system you are using. Download the system and chipset drivers, the audio drivers and the LAN drivers. If your motherboard has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connectivity, then make sure you download them too. Now you'll need to download the GPU driver. If you're using an AMD GPU, go to the AMD website and click on the drivers and support tab. Select your graphics card and click download now. For NVIDIA GPUs, go to the NVIDIA website and install GeForce Experience. I'll put a link to both of these websites in the description. To install your drivers, go to the downloads file and extract the zip files. Go into the extracted files and find the setup.exe file. Click this and follow any on-screen instructions to install. Do this for all the driver files. Now we want to enable AMP or XMP in the BIOS so that your RAM is always running at its maximum speed. Restart your PC and hit the delete key repeatedly until you enter the BIOS screen. Navigate to the AMP or XMP option and change it to enabled. Then in DRAM frequency, you can either leave this on auto or select the specific RAM speed of your RAM sticks. Hit the F12 button to save changes and then restart your PC. And now you're officially done with building and setting up your new gaming PC. Go download some games and have some fun. I've put a link to our favourite game supplier, Aniba, in the description. And welcome to PC Gaming. <laughs>